welcome to Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. Well, hello, sisters. Hello. Hello. Uh, we're all here together again. We are. How nice. Even though we were all together last week. <laughs> <laughs> this keeps happening. <laughs> I don't know why you guys keep showing up. I'm just I'm sitting here. down to record my private podcast by myself. <laughs> What's your private podcast about? <laughs> Sydney's Teen Dreams. <laughs> <laughs> About all the dreams I had as a teenager. You write them all down in your dream journal? I read my dream journal aloud for, <laughs> well, as long as I can. I feel Usually like that's th- marketable. <laughs> Three to four hours at a stretch of Sydney's <laughs> Teen Dream Journal. Then you have to take a break to eat. And then you come back after a lunch break that you take with your audience. <laughs> <laughs> the sound of me eating a sandwich. <laughs> Are you all enjoying your sandwiches? I am too. Back to my dream journal. This for the borders next six on hours. performance art. I think people would be into it. <laughs> it's not as popular as my other podcasts, but it has a great little following on <laughs> Reddit. <laughs> Sydney's uh, Teen Dreams. Wow. So uh, it got super weird right off the bat, ladies. <laughs> So everybody, right now I like, I love the people most who are frantically searching for this. For this. Like, is this is, a real thing? Because she, she did, really she did that thing where she talked about model land that time. So she may have, this might be a thing. <laughs> um, I haven't done that, but you know, you never know. You never know. Maybe I, it's just hidden on your computer somewhere that you recorded it <laughs> <laughs> waiting to be released. Um, oh, before we get started on this, I do want to say a quick thank you to everybody listening who, um, who listened to our last show, well, who listened to any of our shows, but especially everybody who listened to our last show and said such nice, supportive things on Twitter and Facebook um, and emails. We've really appreciated your feedback and your input, and I hope um, that it was a little bit of a catharsis for you. I mm-hmm. think it was for us, and mm-hmm, for sure. and it was. I know it was um, maybe tough. Some people commented it was like tough to listen to, and I think yeah. that's fair, but I also think that the more we can talk about this stuff, the closer we get to finding solutions yeah solving problems and making the world better so thank you for all the support yeah thanks everybody. we love you guys thank you so now let's talk about silly things okay <laughs> now let's be funny again because we promised we would be mm. uh what one thing we've already we already there's no secret because we already said we were going to talk about it last week um my daughter charlie loves to hang out in riley's room when we're over at mom and dad's house because riley has a cool teen room is, I'm, is that is that room. why is that why she likes it? Or is it just because I have a giant teddy bear I was in there say, that's the size that of a person? The, or the giant teddy bear. <laughs> that's literally the size of me. Did you know that Riley has a giant teddy bear, by the way, Taylor? I got it for Christmas. Taylor was there. Yeah, I I was there Christmas morning when she received it. Yeah. She asked for a giant teddy I bear. I did. I find it a little intimidating. I don't like to have like like stuffed animals larger than myself in general that's, well, it's that's not larger than me it's a few inches shorter than it me. it could compete with you <laughs> is this born of a fear that it will come to life someday oh you don't uh yes probably actually oh I, taylor ta- this is a long time <laughs> fear for taylor <laughs> taylor has, waiting has a story on this one i have several stories i won't go into them but there was there was one doll and it was a doll that had a microphone and you could sing through the microphone and your voice would come out in some distorted horror sound of her mouth (laughs) singing like it was awful it was the worst toy ever and so every (laughs) night i would hide her downstairs in the laundry room because i knew she was going to try to come to life and kill me but i figured if i hit her all the way downstairs it would on her tiny legs it would take her all night to get all the way up to my room (laughs) You know, knowing dad, were, were there any nights where he would put the doll, like take it from the laundry room and put it on the top of the stairs? Because I could definitely see him doing that. Well, he, I, yeah. I, he would do it not because he, he was trying to scare me, but because it was out of place. So she kept he making it. it back okay. to my room by the morning. And I'm like, oh, you were close this time, but you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Taylor also had, uh, she was oh, a big no. Lion King fan. <laughs> And she got the Simba and Nala. Go Simba that. Nala Simba, right? Yeah, she got yeah. these Simba and Nala stuffed animals that actually had like magnets in their noses. So they, they like kissed. It was mm-hmm. really cute. I I, I took she, them over. You well, took, oh, you took them? I took them over. Well, you had there. So, yes, I had a Simba Nala that kissed, but I also had a solo Simba. Somebody had stolen the Nala and mom bought him for me anyway. They like, he was like taken from the pack. 
Oh, and I didn't know that's how that happened. I yeah, knew you ended yeah. up with two Simbas, but I didn't know that was why. Yeah, because at first I just found the one Simba and we bought it and not realizing that it had been removed from the packaging. And so then I felt really sad for him. So mom got me another set, but it was a Nala and a Simba. So Sola Simba was still solo. Then he just had to watch another Simba make out with Nala, which was awful. <laughs> <laughs> so Taylor had Simba Nala Simba who accompanied her all the time on thing, except for that you went, we were going to the beach, I think was when this happened and you only took Simba with you, right? Well, solo Simba was always my favorite cause he was alone. <laughs> like me. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> like all your broken little glass yeah, animals. He, he fit in with Taylor's oh. weird glass menagerie. <laughs> so, so he, she took solo Simba to the beach, but she was afraid that the other lions would eat, would eat you, correct? Uh, well, no, see, you're getting a little wrong. This was on a <laughs> nightly basis. I Because Simba was my favorite, he slept on the inside of the bed, uh-huh. and the others were lined up on the outside of the bed to protect me. Okay. From the other <laughs> things in my room that might try to kill me. Uh-huh. From the doll that was going to sneak up the stairs and kill you. Yeah. From the doll, right. But yeah. I, because I was giving him preferential treatment, I had to give an excuse to the lions uh, so they would not try to eat me. And so I told them that he had cholera and he had to be quarantined. <laughs> <laughs> I learned about cholera from the Oregon Trail. <laughs> As did everyone, I think. <laughs> well, so... So now you get a little sneak peek inside Taylor's room growing <laughs> up. Oh, no, man. It was filled with broken glass animals and various stuffed animals <laughs> that may or may not <laughs> have been trying to attack her and may or may not have been protecting her from other stuffed animals. But it's either one or the other. They're either trying to kill her or they're protecting her from it was the a, other There's a tenuous relationship. It's like Game of Thrones going on <laughs> in my childhood mind. Uh, and Riley has a, has a giant teddy bear in hers. Yeah. But I like him. He's not going to kill me. Can I, I ask? I don't know that. Can I ask why you asked for a giant teddy bear? I just was, and I, this is not criticism. I don't care. You rock that giant teddy bear if it makes you happy. But like, I, okay, mom told okay. me that. Mom told me like, t- Riley wants a giant teddy bear for I have, Christmas. I have a very logical explanation and for I'm this. And I'm thinking like, Riley's 15. Why no, does she want a giant no, teddy bear? No, 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 no. I have a very logical explanation. From so Santa, like, I mean, by the way, from right. Santa. Totally. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, um. So, like, you know when you're, like, I know you all don't do homework, but, like, you're trying to do something, (laughs) and your bed is the most comfortable place to do it, like, you're reading, or you're doing homework, Uh or, like, you're watching TV or something, but, like, if you're in your bed all day, then it's harder to fall asleep at night, you know what I mean? That is true. That is very true. So, I needed somewhere, because I like being in my room most, because (laughs) I make it smell good, and I like all my little, like, like, string lights I have hanging everywhere, but my window seat isn't very comfortable because there's the window behind it. That's not comfortable to lean against. Mm-hmm. My bed, if I sit in it all day, I won't have an easy time falling asleep. Mm-hmm. So I needed somewhere I could sit that would be comfortable in my room to do my homework and read my books and watch TV and stuff. So uh-huh. I asked for a giant teddy bear because I have a little bean bag and I prop him up in my bean bag so I can, like, sit there, lean up against him, and that's comfortable. And I'm in my bean bag so it's comfortable to sit on. And then I have a place for it in my room that's a very nice atmosphere, and it's very comfortable. You know, we have these things called chairs. <laughs> but that's I not comfortable. That the solution you came up with was, I need a place to sit. Giant teddy bear. I had a place to sit. I needed to make it comfortable. With I need a giant to, teddy bear. Yeah, I need oh, something no. to lean against. What? I, I okay. mean, you have a furry bean bag. It's not comfortable because it sinks in, so it's like, you know how be. You know how bean bags are. The, like the <laughs> stuffing, like all fills up around the sides, and you're sitting and you're just sitting on the ground because the like the stuffing isn't under your butt anymore, and then it's all behind you, and then you're uncomfortable. I, I get this. Bean bag plus structural integrity given to you by a giant teddy bear equals comfortable sitting space. Yes. <laughs> Equation of insanity. Riley, what you needed, what you needed was something that was popular back when we were younger, which was mm-hmm. a Papa's on chair. Mm. Did you? Did, you didn't have one, did you, Tay? No, no, I, I did not. But you said you did. How do you how do you spell that? It's gonna it's gonna. Pa- I have no idea. So <laughs> I don't because I don't even P- know what kind of word that o- is. P- a P O. I don't I don't know. <laughs> it looked like okay. So I'll describe a Papa's on chair. It was like a big bowl with a big <laughs> like a big wooden bowl with a big pillow that fit into the bowl that you would sit in, and it was like on a base so like it could lean. All the way up like a nest. Uh Uh-huh. Or you could like sit in it like a chair. Does that help? (laughs) 
I'm trying to find this online and none, this doesn't exist. It is a real thing. It's a thing. I loved it. I used to actually put it, it would, it would look like I was sitting in a big nest, if you can imagine that. Okay. It was a big round bowl shaped chair uh-huh. with a big pillow, that same shape that would fit down in it. Oh, so it's like a little like sw- sw- swervy chair. I don't know. A swervy chair. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, like the ones that are like like a, like a half an egg shape. But then when you sit in it, it rocks back so that you're like sitting in a little nest. Well, Maybe? I mean, so, sort of. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. But I don't yeah. have one, but I want one. <laughs> But a pop, but a pop on chair, like it was perfect for home working because you could sit in it like a chair, but then it would, I would also like turn it up like a nest and you had to be careful climbing in it in that position because it was yeah. not stable. Like the pop on <laughs> chair, that was the, the, the main thing a pop on <laughs> chair does is not be stable and fall over sometimes with you in it. That's like <laughs> That's, its pr- primary function. <laughs> yeah. I have no good memories about the pop on chair. <laughs> like, I need you to know sleep in that? how to spell this word that you're saying before chair so I can find a picture of why. <laughs> But I would I've like searched to, five different spellings and I can't find anything. That's is how this? I would write like my angsty teenage poetry. When I was filling out my teen dream journal, I would sit <laughs> in my Pabazon chair upright like a nest. And so I felt like I am hiding in my nest and I am writing deep thoughts. Oh my God. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. That's a Pabazon chair. Okay. It's P-A-P-A-S-A-N. Papasan. Really? Like there, Papasan. Yeah. <laughs> there's no Z in it? No. I was looking like, like, like <laughs> <laughs> Like P O P B A Z A U N Papa Bazan. <laughs> what? <laughs> what were you looking like? Papa Bazan. Oh no! But I didn't know it was spelled like that either. So I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna front here. Like so clearly, it's just what I you always, call your dad in Japanese? Papa Bazan. It's a Papa Bazan chair. <laughs> Is that where it's daddy chair? That's Is it a why daddy chair? That? I don't know. Okay, we're going to have to do some intense research when this okay, is over to look at the origins of the Papa's on chair. Mm. Anyway, they were they were fairly popular when we were younger. Um, I remember our cool Uncle Scampy Mike had one, <laughs> which made yeah. me want one. And um, and I did. I wrote I wrote my angsty teen poetry in it when I used to go by my pen name. There's a Mama's on chair. Oh, sorry. Wait, what, what was, was your pen, pen name? name? And then I need to know about the Mama's on chair. <laughs> <laughs> my, my pen name. Or, I'm sorry nom de plume if you will please uh was lenore oh i did that <laughs> that's right <laughs> you know from, from the poem <laughs> from the po one <laughs> the, the edgar Allan poe poem yeah 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're such a nerd i was a nerd i used to sign everything oh, lenore no. and sometimes i would write Sydney, and then in parentheses, I would write nom de plume Lenore. You would write nom de plume. I would write not how nom de plume works. I know, I know, but I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know then, but I know now. But I used to put that on all of my, like, it was in my diary. Like, I would say diary entries Lenore. I need to find your diary. I have it somewhere. Oh my God. So. So that was that was one thing I remember. Now, Taylor, you had interesting furniture in oh, your room. Yeah. I, I had an inflatable furniture. What was it? The Lunar Lounger? Uh, yes. Like, I, when I was a kid, I had like a fairy themed room. But then when I wanted my like first cool teen room, I got it all from the Delia's catalog. And it was like, kind of <laughs> space themed, so like blue and white. And the, the center point of the room was this big, round, inflatable chair. But it was just kind of a wheel with two, like, kind of uh, stilts on it. I don't know. Like, yeah. you could roll it. <laughs> this, you could roll it. This, like, half egg shape is what popped up whenever I uh, I search a lunar lounger. Because I just keep opening tabs and looking up all these things you guys are talking about. No, this was inflatable. Inflatable furniture was very hot oh, for, yeah. for, like, a minute. Like like a like a pool toy? Like a pool raft? No, but in your room. Like yeah. inflatable? Yeah, inflatable. Yeah. Like you blow it up. Everybody had what? inflatable furniture. Why? But I had the best inflatable furniture. <laughs> you did. You. I remember your room. It was very cool looking. Everything was like sleek and white and modular. And then all the pillows were blue and green. Uh-huh. And I had those those wall lights, the little push lights. Yeah, were, you, you did. Know, those were cool. You'd, you'd line your walls in them. The little battery yeah. operated push lights. Yeah. I have lights in my room. Well, all right. <laughs> it's not a competition. So like, you don't. Like, so you don't live in eternal darkness. Is that what you're telling us? You, you have lights. Great job, Edison. <laughs> it's 
sick burn? No. <laughs> <laughs> you know what would have been better? Wait, I'm going to edit that out. Let's try that again. Hold on. Great job, Tesla. How did I know you were going to say that? Tesla's I think I'm going to edit that, that make out. Me. No, you're not. <laughs> better than so, I'm just going to sit back and listen to you all talk about your room. Now, what kind of lights What kind of lights do you have in your room? String lights. Is like, that you know, like is that popular? Lights. I know you have those Christmas lights. Is that like a... But they're also not Christmas lights. They're white. Well, some people only use white lights on Christmas. But they're mm. not the shape of Christmas lights. They're very different from Christmas lights, Cindy. <laughs> <laughs> what, what are they Christmas lights? They're Christmas lights, right? But like, no. Okay, 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 okay. So like, imagine <laughs> a wire... <laughs> but like a yeah. little a little U hanging upside down from the wire, but like okay, wait no, a U hanging from the wire, but like melded into the wire. So it's like a little like lump that's coming down off of the uh uh huh off the off the, the wire. That's what the lights are like. They're not oh, like those Christmas are like the lights. icicle lights. They're yeah. like you embedded have on Christmas. In, in the wires. Okay. Like they're that. cool looking. Thank I'll you. have to look at them closer. I just assume they were Christmas lights from a distance. They're not Christmas lights. <laughs> Is that a popular thing? I know you have those. Yeah. Is that what they're called? Fairy lights. Fairy People lights. People call them fairy lights. And mm-hmm. all the all the teens have them in their rooms. Yeah. Is this? Uh, would you say that this is both your male and female friends? No. No. Females. Mainly your female friends have those. Yeah. Mm. Fairy lights. Yeah. Well, I remember. Um, I've never been inside a boys' room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you don't know. Maybe they do. So you don't know. I. I, and I will say that to be fair, most of my like my reference point for when I was thinking about this teen rooms, it was female teen rooms. Yeah, because I mean, mm-hmm. when we had a lot of slumber parties and they were largely in yeah, you know. Other, although I uh, know I was in some teen boys bedrooms <laughs> from time to time. Yeah, we know all the all the uh, all the stuff you were getting into on the bus and uh, mm-hmm. apparently in teen boys bedrooms too. Smooching smooth justin i remember had this other than a lot of video game things when he was a teenager i remember he had this poster of i think it was like a football player saying never shake a baby wait justin (laughs) had a football player poster Uh, yeah saying never shake and i never i remember looking at it poster and thinking like this is a higher level of comedy than i understand i don't know why he has a poster that says never shake a baby and it's a football player but i remember that poster in his room, in his cool teen room. Mm-hmm. Cool teen boy room. Mm-hmm. I was in some teen boy rooms. It sounds like you were in more than just a few. <laughs> Whoa. Uh, well, that smooching you were doing. Now, speaking of, of lights, we, um, we were part of the era where black lights were popular. Mm. Um, the, now, Riley, I'm sure you've seen black lights I have no idea what black lights are. Please explain. Is that real? No, okay. no. Of course I know what black lights are, Cindy. <laughs> they make white things glow, and you can have things that are like black light responsive, and so then they glow neon colors and yeah. things. And so it was very cool to have like, I had a black light in my room that I could turn on, and then I had posters on my walls that were... <laughs> you had the sickest black light room. I did. I had like... Now, now I recognize they're the kind of posters that I did not smoke marijuana in high school. That is what they were for. Though. But that is what they were for. Like it was, <laughs> they were from, a, did I get them at a head shop? Like where did you I get them? You got them at, oh, what was that store at the mall with all the slightly inappropriate stuff? Spencer's. Spencer's, yes. You had I the sh- one with like Alice and the, the Caterpillar. I did. <laughs> yeah. I did. I had several black light posters on my own. And they were like the velvety ones. So they uh-huh. were like fuzzy to yeah. feel and then they all lit up with black lights and then when i got super cool <laughs> my friends would come and write on the walls with <laughs> black light paint i like know neon i paint i took that room when you the left are- I, I saw those i saw those uh those black light sentences well i, I remember the best thing that was written on your walls <laughs> 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 what was what was that uh, it was like right up at the top above your bed and it was in huge letters and um it said, uh, I be stroking. <laughs> uh, and dad saw it the day after it was made and, and was questioning. He was like, I, I best rockin'? I best rockin'? <laughs> but I only just now learned who wrote that. Uh, that was written by Justin McElroy. <laughs> <laughs> he, was a, he was a big Clarence Carter fan. He used to perform I be stroking at karaoke. And he, gosh, he was a teenager when he was into that. 
That's Which is hilarious. why, like, Justin was always cooler than I gave him credit for. Like, I realize that now as an adult. Um, but he wrote that on my bedroom wall. And we were out. I, I didn't even know what it meant at the time or, like, what it was a reference to. And Dad certainly didn't. Maybe he does now. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he still thinks it was I best rocking. <laughs> best rocking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Justin wrote that on my wall. I also had, yeah, my, my friends were, like, we had the usual stuff, like, I love so-and-so, so-and-so plus so-and-so equals love, like those kinds of things. Um, but then we would also quote like our favorite things. So like I had like Princess Bride quotes all over my walls. You know, my name is Inigo Montoya. <laughs> you kill my father, prepare to die was on my wall. Um, I had a friend who put like a lot of Barbara Streisand quotes on my wall. And then, <laughs> yeah, I had a so ton cool. of, I had like Princess Bride and Barbara Streisand and I be stroking on my wall. And then uh, I had, uh, Somebody else who right next to my bed, I did not write this, right next to my bed wrote, it's 3 a.m., I must be lonely, which of course is a Matchbox 20 lyric <laughs> that I lived with next to my bed. Uh, that was all still there when you moved into that room. I know. A lot of it was covered up, though. And I feel like now um, they did that, mom and dad did that on purpose, like they put bookshelves in uh, strategic mm -hmm. places to cover up these, uh, did you... Okay, did you have a water bed? Because I'm thinking about your room now. Did you have a water bed? I had a she water did. bed. I yeah. forgot about that because I was just thinking about like, well, my bed was there, but also there was a water bed. Yes, I had I had a water bed. I thought that they were very cool. I had this whole like outer space themed room. I had the night sky like painted on my ceiling, and my mom mom made me a lot of like paper mache things that look so like cool. suns and moons and stars. So cool. <laughs> There was, a, there was also kind of an astrology theme oh, in my room. Oh, you know what? It hmm. wasn't paper mache. It was decoupage. Oh, that's what it was. It was decoupage. Yeah. Decoupage. yeah. I had that decoupage trunk. I had all kinds of decoupage yeah. things. Uh -huh. um, and then I had a big old waterbed in there. Mm -hmm. I loved that waterbed. Mm -hmm. that, that green waterbed. Water uh -huh. That green waterbed. Waterbeds were very cool at that moment in time, too. We I don't started... remember how we got that in or out of the I was going to say, we started that's... discussing this last week. Um how do how do you get rid of in or import a water bed? How do you fill a water bed? How did we fill it? I know there's a little plug on it because I remember uh -huh. seeing the little circle. There was a plug on it. This is the best I can. And also, by the way, you have to heat those. Do you remember that? No. Yeah, it got super hot. Yeah, it would get super hot, but it could also get freezing if you didn't have the heat on it. So like it was either way, it's a terrible idea. Don't sleep on a bag of water. Like that's that's the practical choice but here. But then also like super fun because like you're rolling around on it. That was what I thought. Like, yeah. Ah, it's on the Ooh, I'm on the ocean. But I feel like yours was always a little too full because you just kind of like fall onto either side of a big hump of water. That's exactly it. It was actually if you slept vertically in it like you're supposed to sleep in a bed, it was really uncomfortable. If you slept horizontally, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> Sounds like you did water beds wrong. But we I think I, I'm did. trying to remember, like, I don't know how we filled it up or how we got it out. No, My best guess is that that window in my bedroom that was right above the bed. I feel like maybe we pumped the water out that way. Like we hooked up because it had like a hookup for a hose. <laughs> you had like a whole system. <laughs> <laughs> like the I'm window. thinking like aqueducts and <laughs> <laughs> and pipes and and hoses and all to fill up your water bed. <laughs> Let's science this. How can we do this? <laughs> Sydney wants a water bed. I don't. I mean, there has to be a way people got water beds in and out of their houses. Those seem like, like big risks. Just a big bag of water. Like you're sleeping on it. There's a plug really close to your feet. Like some like things could have gone wrong with that. I feel like you it definitely got punctured at one point and that's when you got rid of it. It did. It did get a hole oh, in it. No. it. It took a long time. Let me say this. Like, Did you try? Did you try to get a hole in it no. so you could get rid of it? Oh, no. Well, at the by the end, I hated it. By the end, I was like, <laughs> I can't sleep I ever... vertically on this bed. <laughs> but once your parents have like invested in like indulging your teenage desire for a, a water bed and i'm sure it was expensive and then building all those tunnels to get that water into it <laughs> <laughs> to look at him and say i want my water bed gone like nope you're gonna enjoy it and you're gonna love it and you're gonna sleep on it every night you're gonna take it with you to college <laughs> this is your water this is your best friend now <laughs> you guys both had fancy beds i only ever just had a twin like <laughs> now that i'm thinking about it it's very unfair the bed distribution you did just, well, you did have a twin, but to be fair, you slept with me most of the time. That is true. What was that? What was that song? 
Oh, oh no. No. <laughs> no, I don't know. What was the song? Nope. 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 Kill, kill you, please? Not. Nope. <laughs> then I have to. And no. that's been still buffering. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> what was. Can, can we please? No. Let's just say no, there was I'm, a song I used to. No. <laughs> Stop. You used to sing. No, you would sing. You would okay. sing I used to sing to invite Taylor to come sleep with me because because well, like I when lived we were in a younger, war room full of animals that wanted to eat me. <laughs> when we were younger, we loved to sleep together. That like we would love to to sleep in my room together. And then I became a teenager and I wanted my space, like my personal space. And Taylor was still young enough that she was like, "No, uh, why and can't we still sleep together?" Terrified of my bedroom. And Taylor was afraid of all of her stuffed animals. <laughs> Taylor kept setting traps for herself by, by <laughs> wanting things that would eat her or murder her and not getting rid of them. No, never. And then, so I, uh, I, when I was feeling in a, I don't know, a more sisterly mood, I would go sing a song to Taylor to tell her that she could come sleep in my bed. Can, can you please? No. no. I think that, no. I think that's for another day. Guys. Riley looks really sad. I'm really sad about uh. this. Jesus, but that reveals something. Uh, uh, Your for nickname. S- for some reason, we used to... Why did we call you? <laughs> I don't know. We used to call say Taylor... It, say it, say it, say it. Poo-poo-ly. This is my boyfriend listens to the show. <laughs> Poo Lee. I don't know why we called you Poo Lee. It was a character you made up. Like, you drew somebody... <laughs> That you called Poo Lee. That was your I can no friend. I comment as I have been killed with your words. <laughs> there was like an imaginary friend that you drew. And then we all thought it was so funny. We started calling you Poo Lee. <laughs> I don't know why, though. Oh, man. But when... <laughs> Are you going to do it now? Because I was going to say, if you really don't that. want to, that was enough saying the nickname. But if you if you really want to make me happy, you really want to make my day. Well, the <clears> part <throat> that I was afraid of is over. Sydney, sing the song. <laughs> oh, the weather outside is frightful. <laughs> but poo Lee is so delightful. And <laughs> since it's so scary, poo Lee, won't you please sleep with me? <laughs> Oh no! And then Taylor would come sleeping by waterbed yeah. in my black light posters. Roll all the way over into that horrible hot corner on the other <laughs> side of the water home. I would, I would usher you through my beaded curtain, through my glow in the dark stars and moons beaded curtain that hung in my door. Oh man! Taylor had a beaded curtain. Mm-hmm. It was little disco, disco balls. balls. Yeah. Those beaded curtains were very popular, too. That was, like, a cool thing mm-hmm. to have in your room. But then doesn't it only work if your door is, like, always open? Yeah. Because I feel like if you shut your door, it just it looks weird. It did. Mm. And they always got tangled. They were always yeah. a mess. Do you know why those are those were invented? To hang yeah. in places where flies are a problem, to keep flies out of rooms. I feel like flies could <laughs> figure their way out. <laughs> yeah. between are they those so beads. easily fooled? Well, they're they're supposed to be like really heavily beaded, and so there's not a lot of space between them. So humans pass in and out easily, but they keep flies out. Your alls weren't legit beaded curtains. No, mine were, (laughs) mine were for style. (laughs) They were they were glow in the dark stars as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taylor, did you ever think about that? Maybe if you had had a real beaded curtain, your animals wouldn't have tried to kill you because they wouldn't have been able to get through to your room through the beaded curtain. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, hmm, I, you know, I didn't feel it. I, I, that did not give me the security I needed. <laughs> just, just a thought. <laughs> Although I did get it. Uh, I oh man, yeah, I was I was a scared kid. Like I had a a board <laughs> that I put under my doorknob at a certain mm-hmm. point in my life just to add extra protection so nobody could open the door. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh my. That kept the animals out for sure. And she slept with a knife under her pillow. Oh uh, man, this episode's going places that I didn't think it was going to go. So, so teen rooms of today. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so what? So that was kind of that was kind of the overview. I think those are the big highlights. For a while, I didn't mention. For a while, I did have a room that was entirely inspired by DJ Tanner from Full House. Oh yeah, nice. Which was the coolest, right? Uh, but what? What other than giant teddy bears and fairy lights? Um, <laughs> <laughs> what what are you kids into? Uh, you know, based on your all's description of your teen rooms, it seems like teens are getting a lot more boring <laughs> than what they used to be, because I guess popular colors for rooms now are like beige and gray and white, 
and like neutral colors and uh what? like solid color bedspreads and um not a lot of stuff on your walls but like candles and like planters that have like plants in them like plants from, like yeah plants like but then planters. you have to take care of them right or you can get fake plants fake plants or cactus cacti 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 are you don't, popular you don't have to water them a lot you and have if you just have cacti if you just have a window in your room they get the they get the sunlight i'm baffled this is you you guys have more adult rooms than i have ever had in my entire life that's what i'm saying the one like, i'm sitting in right now <laughs> yeah me too yeah i mean they're super super grown-up rooms wow. so my room's not like that but. so no posters um not typically Oh, okay. But I mean, yeah. I do. Because I mean, like, I had like a giant Brad Pitt poster. You did. <laughs> Super cool. From Legends of the Fall, which, by the way, I still have not seen that movie to this day. <laughs> I just really liked the way Brad Pitt looked in it. Uh, like, yeah. I had like a like a signed John Green poster in my room. My mom got me for Christmas. You have lots of, of the Faulkner Stars paraphernalia. I have one Faulkner Stars poster and one signed John Green poster. Okay. And that signed John Green poster is my most prized possession. Man. Other than my signed Hamilton book that's signed by Lynn manuel Miranda. <laughs> Those are my two most prized possessions. And okay, they're both displayed proudly in my room. That is uh, true. I'm a, I'm a little afraid that, or afraid of teens now because I always kind of judge people that didn't have stuff on their walls. Like, Oh, I have a ton of stuff on my walls now. Like, well, I have a big yeah. bulletin board because my bed's kind of pushed up in a corner, but it has a headboard against one wall. So against the wall that the edge of the bed is against. I have a big bulletin board that has all my little, like, personal knickknacks up on it. Hmm. Do you still have some of your drawings up on it? Mm-hmm. Do you I still do. draw Disney princesses with no faces? No, I don't anymore. Okay. <laughs> that, I guess that was the thing I used to do. Because <laughs> I couldn't get the faces right, but I could get the bodies right and the clothes right, so I just... So Love you, the faces all. I know. So void. <laughs> so Riley did. Yes, they did. They they were just <laughs> perfect replicas of Disney princesses with a with a blank white circle. Because I could instead of okay, a face. Okay, no, I painted them like their their skin color. I painted their their <laughs> like the same color as yeah, their yeah. hands and their feet and stuff. I painted it on the face. It was not white. Okay. But yes, I couldn't get the faces right. The faces are hard. I mean, they are hard, but That's like true. leaving them off is a strange. I liked drawing I like them. Some strange postmodern art exhibit that you've missed out on. Like, you could have made money off. You I really liked... scared mom with that. I mom know. was like, "What does this mean?" And I was like, "Whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't know." And she was like, "She says it's just because she can't draw the faces, but do you think that this is a problem? Should I worry?" <laughs> no, like I really liked drawing the princesses because they were like my favorite. And I thought it was fun to draw, like, you know, like, the colors, like, their hair and their dresses and their clothes and stuff. But I didn't feel like drawing the faces. I just, like, drawing their outfits. <laughs> but I was like, well, I can't just draw an outfit. I have to put a body in it. So I had to draw their bodies with their outfits on them. And then I didn't want to do the faces. Did you ever consider leaving them headless? That would have been weird. <laughs> oh, oh, that would have been weird. Yeah, the faceless. No, but that's you fine. Can't, but then you can't draw their hair. Okay. And the hair's fun, too. Like, Ariel's, like, all that red hair. I don't know. I think that this goes together. Taylor's room full of broken glass animals and your room full of pictures <laughs> of faceless Disney princesses. There's your room was a head shop. Calm down. <laughs> <laughs> My room was cool. No. <laughs> so cool. No. <laughs> you best rockin', Sid. <laughs> <laughs> you best rockin'. It's 3 a.m. I must be lonely. <laughs> <laughs> so other than that, not, not, no other big teen trends? You guys keep um, fake plants in your room? That's it? Yeah. I guess some people have real plants, but I couldn't take care of those. Also, like, if they started, like, dying and they got their stuff all over your floor, like, their mm -hmm. leaves and stuff. Is incense still a thing? <laughs> um, we see, didn't have Taylor's, a Taylor's laughing, so I'm assuming what the answer should be is no. Um, and I'm going to say the answer is no for the majority of the population. But for me, of course it's still a thing. It makes your room smell good. I, I think incense was great. I used I to really enjoy. I have incense and candles, but like some of my candles are my favorites because I have a lot of candles. I, you've been in my room a lot, said because Charlie's always in my room, and Charlie always plays with my candles. Mm -hmm. I have like a very large collection of candles, but some <laughs> of my favorites I don't want to run out because I did that once. I would like burn this one all the time, and then it's gone. So whenever I didn't want to burn out my candles, an alternative is incense because you can just go buy more. 
You can buy more candles. But too. like, I get, <laughs> not I get a non renewable like resource. I get the limited edition ones from Bath and Body Works, like only oh the Christmas scents, and you can't buy them until Christmas again. <laughs> You know what I'm talking Riley, about? Riley, that's so <laughs> weird. You only get Christmas no, scents? No, 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 no. I mean, like, my favorite ones are the Christmas ones. Uh-huh. And I burn I them all year long. For Christmas but I have year, to, just... like, ration out my candle burning time so that I have enough of the Christmas ones left until next Christmas. Okay, mm-hmm. we're going to have to get Riley a lot of uh, yes. Christmas scented candles. For yeah, this like, year. my favorite that's one it. is, like, this cinnamon cookie one that I got from Bath and Body uh-huh. Works and I burned it all out within like two months because I, it was my favorite one and now it's gone and I can't get it until Christmas again. Huh. But the, the thing that strikes me, <laughs> aside, aside from this bizarre candle usage, the, the thing that strikes me is that when I remember like uh, being a teenager, the reason that I did the stuff I did to my room in part was because it was my space mm-hmm. and that's, that was a big deal, right? Like it, this is your personal space that you get to define and decorate however you want. Yeah. Your parents yeah. don't get to make rules for you, which is like a big, that independence that you feel is a big deal. But then the other part was that I wanted it to say a lot of stuff about me so that oh, when yeah. my friends came over, you know, I could say like, look at all, this is me. Look at yeah. th- look on the walls, look on the bookshelves, look, you know, on the ceiling. This is me. This is who I am. Mm-hmm. Other than the Mashbox 20 quote. Right. <laughs> that's one of my friends. True. That's not me. You know, is that is that still truth i mean because if your room is all beige and has fake plants in it i don't know what that says about you i guess you like plants fake ones fake ones um i like plants but i don't have time to care for them that i mean which is like a fine like i I agree i am also in that category i don't know that that's a defining characteristic yeah i guess that's i mean my room isn't really like that i mean yeah i have the lights but other than that i mean my room is like if you look on my desk it's like on the top of it there's like all sorts of pictures i've taken and like all sorts of like little fortunes from fortune cookies and then above my bed i have like all sorts of stuff from shows i've been in and i have my theater box that has all my memorabilia from all the shows i've been in like stargrams and stuff but like that's what i want to put in my room because then it's like people come over and it's like oh look at all these pictures of you from when you were little and then like Mm -hmm. look there's you and your friend from 2010 and then there's you and your friend 2016 those little photo strips from the mall like that kind of stuff is like what i like putting in my room because then it's like look at all this look at all this cool stuff Look, oh, at, look at me. That's super true. I mean, that's I was always a super quiet, very shy kid in school. But like you'd come into my room and I, I had the cool space room, but uh, I was covered in like wall scrolls, like tons of action figures and anime mm-hmm. stuff. And it's like, here is who I am. Like, Yeah. No, you did. You had had anime and, and manga stuff all over the place. It was very easy to see what you were into and what you were all about by walking into your room. I also like to display all my favorite books. So in case any of my friends are looking for book suggestions, (laughs) I can just say, look at my windowsill. How often does that happen? Not, it's never (laughs) happened. (laughs) Well, and if you're ever on Room Raiders, then uh, who knows, the the person of your dreams would know everything they need to know about you. What's Room Raiders? Please tell, please tell Riley about Room Raiders now, please. Uh, it, It was a great MTV show where, um, like a, a prospective mate would go into your room and decide if they wanted to go on a date with you just by looking around your room. But they did some weird stuff on that show. Speaking of black lights, you would like look over their like bed with the black light to see if they're a disgusting human or not. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was it was weird. It was to see if you were gross and then also to see like if you'd be compatible. So I think they were like, you'd go into three different rooms, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. And the, and, the, and the three prospective suitors or mates, suitorettes as, as or, what, or mates <laughs> the three prospective mates would uh follow along in like a big trailer watching a tv remember this yeah yeah they were like they'd driving watch, around watch somebody go through your room oh. yeah they would drive and like follow and be watching a tv and watch someone go through your room and then say whether or not they thought like this is a swinging cat i want to go out with them a swinging cat you know what i mean yeah <laughs> i mean i guess i get that like you know you can tell a lot by a person by walking in their room. But again, not if they have like beige walls and... True. Yeah, what would you know? Yeah, True. I mean, how is that... like? Maybe what you know about those people, if their room is like that, that they're not very original. Do, mm. And they're a follower. Do people, they're a cool teen. Mm, do people hang out in their rooms as much? Like, Because that was... When people came over to our house, if it was a bunch of us, we might like take over the basement or something. Yeah. But if it's just a couple of us, we were no, in yeah. my room. I mean, yeah. that's where we, my friends and I, you know, and Taylor, I'd say you and your friends are the same way. Oh, yeah. So is that, 
still the case? You bring your teen friends oh, yeah. over, they hang out in your room. Definitely. That's like the site um, of teen happenings. Unless it's like <laughs> teen happenings. Yes. Um, unless it's like a party or like a group of people that's both boys and girls. I don't know. I feel weird when it's like guys and girls, like all hanging out together. Cause then it's like, we are in like the family room or outside by the mm. pool. But if it's just like, I'm having girls over for a sleepover or something, then yeah, we're just in my room with the door shut playing music. And do you like over at your friend's house? Same case. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you know anything about your friends? If you go in their room and it's just beige. I don't know. None of my friends have their rooms like that. So no more inflatable furniture. No more papas on chairs. And mama's on chairs. I never got to explain the mama's on chairs. Oh, please. So so are they mama's on and papa's on? Yeah. There's a mama's on chair and a papa's on chair. And the mama's on chair is a double seated version of the papa's on chair. Weird. It Why says the mama's it? on chair is a double seating version and was introduced to the Western world in the 1950s. Well, where do they originate from? Uh, prior to that, it was used in Far Eastern Asia, particularly Indonesia, Thailand, and Japan. Okay, so maybe they are Mama-san and Papa-san. Like, wow. Actual, oh. like, mom and dad. <laughs> Let's, wow. Listen to this. It is not clear when the Papa-san chair is actually invented because apparently natives in the Philippines and Japan have been using it for centuries before American soldiers discovered them during World War II. These soldiers oh. were so impressed with the quality, comfort, and appearance of the chairs, they brought some of them home with them after the war ended. That's super interesting. So you guys mocked my papa's on chair, and now how silly do you feel? Now I want to find a picture of mama's on chair. <laughs> They're historically important. Oh, it's like a like a like a very wide papa's on chair. Oh, made it for is. two people. Riley, bring them back. Make them cool. Make I them need. Cool, Dean, make them okay, cool. this mama's on chair is thirty five dollars. Get it. I kind of need it. Get but it also, right there's the exact same picture, and it says $165. I feel like something is fishy with that Google search. I would assume that it was not $35. I would, too. It's a large chair. It now, is a large chair. Uh, would you, how would you rate the comfort, do you think, of that as compared to the giant teddy bear on the beanbag? Oh, giant <laughs> teddy bear on the beanbag is the most comfortable seating option in any room you could find on the face of planet Earth. So Maybe the aliens have invented something way more comfortable, but on this on this planet, <laughs> and in, in this in this area, in of, this reality, in this time stream, in this corner of our universe, come to my room. You'll find the I've most comfortable years seating just arrangement. Sitting on chairs. I know all this time. Yeah, we wait. I wasted time with Papa's on chairs, Taylor and her inflatable furniture, and all along, what you needed was the the creativity, the innovation that it took for Riley to put together a giant teddy bear on a beanbag chair. You're make you're making fun of it now, but wait until you sit in it and you realize how comfortable <laughs> it is. Well, because of you, we have a giant teddy bear here now. You now. do? Yeah. What? Because Charlie wanted one so badly. We I've bought started something. Charlie will have one, and then when she gets old enough and she's in school, all of her friends will want one, and then it. I started a revolution. So that's the new teen trend. Is there some way bears. to combine the two into like a marketable object? Can you go on Shark Tank with the beanbag teddy bear? <laughs> what if you made... Okay, okay, I, hear me out. What if the torso of the teddy bear was a beanbag, so it was a beanbag with the arms and legs and head of a teddy bear, but you could sit in the middle and it was a chair. Teddy chair. Teddy chair. Why are we uh, talking about this on uh, no, TM? No. TM. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright, trademark. It's ours. I'm drawing a picture and mailing it to myself right now. You can't steal this idea. <laughs> We need to cut this part out so no Lord one can Grenier, know. Lord Grenier, don't listen. <laughs> Guys, this is the next big thing. Teddy chair. Teddy, Teddy chair. chair. <laughs> Coming to a Walmart near you. <laughs> Walmart? That's what we're going for? I mean, we want mass distribution. That pottery barn? Oh, no. Listen. Target? Come on. That is not pottery barn level. I'm sorry. That is... Yeah. That's, that's this no isn't our, even that's a... That's nowhere market. This isn't even a Pier 1 kind of thing. No. <laughs> It's better than all of that. Listen, some things are a zero, some things are a hero. And this is a hero. Maybe a hero. hero. This Maybe is a hero. hero. <laughs> this, is, this is Ikea. You can sit in this while you eat meatballs. Please <laughs> tell me that Taylor and Riley informed me right before we started recording that there are meatballs at Ikea, and this yeah. is news to me. I mean, I've never been to an Ikea, but that's what I hear, oh, right? I, I have to be a little drunk to spend any large amount of money. So my favorite, like when I need new furniture, get a little drunk, go to Ikea, get some meatballs, Spend like five hundred dollars on a bed. Like that's it's a good it's a good day. <laughs> Taylor owns eight beds. <laughs> I don't, she lives in Brooklyn. I don't know where she puts them. <laughs> Her entire floor is made out of mattresses. <laughs> she just rolls around and jumps in my room of beds. 
Taylor built herself an apartment out of beds. It was crazy, but it pri- rent's really high there, and so she yeah. had to do what she had to do, okay? And if you find the right corner, you'll find the water bed. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is my first, I have my first, like, adult bed, and it's the one that wasn't just the standard. Anyone that's been to an Ikea knows it. It's like the $140 frame, twin yeah. size, like, it's the cheap combination. I, it took me until I was 29 years old to own a box spring in New York, like, because <laughs> anything you buy buy you eventually have to move usually on a semi-regular basis <laughs> so yeah like and i find that as as furniture gets more expensive it gets heavier um i don't know why that works that way but it does that <laughs> so, is true that is true yeah this is my um, first bed that's not a twin size mattress on like just the metal crossbars i'm telling you if you need a new one in the future casper they send you that big mattress in a box Mm-hmm. This is not an ad. I'm yeah, not getting paid to say ad. this. No, we, we really, we just got a, <laughs> That's the first thing they I was send you that say. big mattress rolled up in a box and it's really cool. It's not that heavy and it's super comfy. It is comfy. Mm. I've slept on. Yeah. Um, well, with that. <laughs> <laughs> with that. Uh, we, we, I think we need to go because we've got a teddy chair to invent. Yeah. Like if, we have to draw it right. Taylor, Taylor. I've I'm never, on it. I'm on I've it. never counted on you for anything more than this. <laughs> Please. I will have the drawing done and trademarked before this episode goes live. Okay, no good. Worries, girl. Okay. Good. So we have one day. We'll release it with the teddy chair and <laughs> that'll be our new logo. <laughs> Us this all is an ad sitting for the in a teddy, teddy chair. chair. <laughs> I just need one, I know. I know I do too. I mean, I basically already have one, but not with the catchy name. Yeah, and we <laughs> really we don't want somebody swooping in and stealing all our all our hot teddy chair money. All our hot teddy chair money. <laughs> No, I feel like the aesthetics of this would be kind of terrifying. Like a teddy bear that just melted into (laughs) its own stomach. Like I'm not. You've got to make it look happy. I would be afraid of that. (laughs) Make it look like it's really happy. But not too happy because then it's like, ah, that's crazy. Big (laughs) stitches that it shows where it's been stitched into the bean bag. (laughs) No, no, it's got to look like I'm so happy to be your chair today. Basically just a really fat bear. I'm so happy I sacrificed my legs for your comfort. (laughs) Basically just a really fat bear, right? Yeah, like a bear only with like a um, squishy tummy. A lot of central obesity, like a lot of adiposity in the central. Like a bear a with a squishy tummy. Excess. Oh, I, this is yeah, adipose I cells there. A really fat bear. Yeah, that's what we I, need. I'm afraid of this, and it doesn't exist yet. A big and squishy middle, tummy. The bear. middle isn't stuffed. It's filled with the, the stuffing from a beanbag. There you go. Teddy chair. Teddy chair. Teddy chair. Oh my okay. God, guys. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us. This, bearing um, with us. Uh-huh. Through, no. the, <laughs> through this brainstorming session. <laughs> this is. <laughs> you were here with us when Teddy chair was first. Yeah, you, you can get it. If you want to invest in Teddy chair, <laughs> tweet at us at Still Buff. <laughs> <laughs> or email us at stillbufferingatmaximumfun.org. Or, uh, or, if, or if you have anything else to say, you can use those too. Also, please join our Facebook group. Um, <laughs> it's a wonderful group of 5,000 plus amazing That's individuals. Crazy. So come join the, join the party. Um, find your latest updates on when Teddy Chair will be coming to a store near you. Coming soon to a store near you, I promise. Thank you, as always, for listening to our show. Thank you to Maximum Fun for hosting um, us and uh, as well as us, a, a lot of other wonderful podcasts. And along that line, Max Fun Con East. Max Fun Con East is coming up Labor Day weekend. And literally our entire family will be there. That's right. Just September meet the whole cast. <laughs> September 2nd through the 4th in the Poconos. And it, I'm just going to say, last year we had a live show on my birthday, or you all did. This year, it's three days after my birthday. If anyone wants to bring me presents <laughs> i was gonna say where are you going with this because riley wants presents yeah. but we will i mean literally everybody will be there of course the of three course of your, your favorite brothers justin travis and griffin will be there as always and um, their wives as well as their wives incl- i am one of those right. wives uh <laughs> so Teresa and rachel will be there uh their dad clint will be there uh i will be there taylor will be there riley will be and there both of our parents will be there and both our mommy and daddy will be there too mommy and daddy <laughs> Mother and Charlie will be there too and my baby my baby Charlie we will all mm. be there so all the <laughs> mackle smurls smurl mackleroy smackleroys whatever you prefer to call us mackle smurls yeah we'll all mackle be there smurls. I kind of like smackleroys I like mm. smackleroys because like we're first right 
to each their own. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we were all we will all be there. So yeah. please, if you can, come sign up, check out maximumfun.org for details. And bring me a birthday. And get present. tickets. And if you would like to bring Riley a birthday present. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. It will be her sweet sixteen. I'll give you a teddy oh, chair. Man. Her sweet, sweet sixteen. That'll be so. my sweet sixteen. Um and thank you, sisters, as always. And thank you to the novellas for our theme song, Baby Change Your Mind. Yeah. So this has been Still Buffering, a sister's guide to teens through the ages. I am Riley Smurl. I'm Sydney McElroy. And I'm Taylor Smurl. I am a teenager. And I was too. too. MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported.